I picked up this watch um, almost um, six months ago. Now, um, Zodiac came up um, onto my radar when I was looking at my doxa. Uh, I was looking to buy a doxa. A few people <clears throat> said to me, I'll have a look at Zodiac as well. Uh, so I, I looked into the brand and it was an interesting brand, but it wasn't really something that really caught my eye. Uh, it is, this is a good watch for £400 retail, but unfortunately it's not £400 watch, it's a £1,099 watch retail. Nearest damn it, it's £1,100, and that's what, uh, 13, nearly $1,400 US dollars basically a overpriced micro brand um, that's the way I, I see it it's not worth the money that they're asking absolutely not now it's uh, it's owned by the fossil group um, now, now Zodiac um, is an old brand it, it dates back to 1882 but it's not a brand which had a constant history uh, it, it was passed around from pillar to post it went uh, completely out of uh, production for, for a long time and then it was bought by the Fossil Group back in 2001 for a mere five million dollars which sounds quite like quite a lot uh, honestly uh, I think it's well overpriced for, for them but Fossil are making a real big effort to push this watch or uh, this brand and there are there is a bit of a cult following to it which you always get with, with some watches for me I just don't get it. I, I think for the £400 mark, it's a fine, perfectly good watch for, in the micro brand uh, weight. Because, like I said, for me, this is basically a micro brand, which is kind of relying on its history. Again, a very broken history. Let me tell you about the, the specs of the watch first. Let's get that out of the way. So, it is a 39mm watch with uh, a bezel which makes it. 40 millimeters because if you look at the side of the bezel it comes out slightly so that does help you when you're turning the bezel now if you listen to the bezel when I did the unboxing to me that sounded and felt like a very plasticky sound and feel to it it wasn't something that felt like yeah it, it's it's good now fossil no sorry excuse me uh, Zodiac has got a bit of a bad reputation of uh, quality control this one, I haven't really looked too deeply into it because I don't really want to go down that rabbit hole because I'm sure I would find some things with it because I basically don't like this watch. For the price, I don't like this watch, whatever. Uh, a lot of people have found dust underneath uh, the crystal on the dial. They have uh, chapter rings not lining up. Uh, the fit and finish of this is n not really that impressive. It's just a standard fit and finish uh, there's nothing special about it the brushing on the edges nothing too spectacular i've seen uh, watches micro brand watches uh, which have got a lot better finish to it so this really is trading on its um, history which i don't think is there uh, it runs the stp3-13 now they call it an in-house movement which you could technically call it an in-house movement because uh, STP is owned by the fossil group so they're basically giving Zodiac that movement and they're calling it an in-house movement now for me I don't count that as an in-house movement an in-house movement to me is when the brand itself is making the movement so uh, if Zodiac was making the movement I would say yeah then that's an in-house movement but they're just taking a movement from their big brother brand and then just sticking it in their uh, watch. It's, it's like Hamilton uh, calling their uh, movements all in-house because they're part of the Swatch Group and the Swatch Group on ETA. So they could claim it's an in-house movement. I don't actually know if they do that. Um, I don't think they do. I think they just give it a, a Hamilton reference number, but they don't claim it's an in-house movement. I know a lot of people. I, I actually don't know if Fossil claim it, but I've I've heard it banded around to say, oh, it's an in-house movement. So if you if you hear that, it's actually not an in-house movement technically. So you got uh, the screw down crown here, which is I've actually unscrewed it, and if you, it's quite difficult to actually screw it back in and to unscrew it. Now the problem with the crown where it is, it's got no crown guards, which is a good thing because it's hard enough to open it and close it as it is. 
Because the bezel comes out by a millimeter, it makes it quite difficult to get your finger in there and to undo it and, and to close it and, and wind it. It's not the easiest thing to do. It's quite difficult. So, and that's merely because of the bezel. I can understand why they've done that, but I think what they could have done is done something, made, them made the crown a little bit bigger. That would have helped, but They've they've tried to go back to one of their old uh, watches and re recreate that, which they've done a pretty good job. Now I picked this one up uh, for it just under six hundred pounds, brand new from the dealer uh, from the Zodiac Z dealer, uh, the same dealer I bought my um, Doxa from. Now the reason I I bought it, I when it when it came up. I looked at it and it was 1100, uh, 11, I'm just gonna call it 1100 pounds. It's nine, uh, 1,099 pounds, so it's just one pound less. So when I saw it, I thought, whoa, that's just too expensive for what it is. So I just completely disregarded it and thought, okay, no. Then they started having their discounts just after Christmas. Um, they went to 20% discount. And I thought, no, it's still too expensive. Uh, time went on, they dropped it uh, again. They gave 30% discount. Again, I thought, no, it's still too much. I'm not gonna buy it. They then went to 40% discount. Now, I don't know if they're having real difficulty selling these watches. I can understand why, because as I said, they're, I think they're overpriced. Uh, and I still didn't buy it at the 40% discount. Then they came to, all right, we'll give you 40% discount, then we'll give you another 10% discount. Now, it doesn't work out exactly at 50% discount because what they do is they take the 40% off and then whatever's left over, they give you the 10% on that. So the take of that. So it works out around about 46, 47% actual discount. And at that price, I thought, you know what? I'll take a punt. It's not too, it's still over, overpriced, but I was thinking, okay, even if I don't like the watch, which I don't, I can always resell it for uh, for the same price that um, I paid for it, if not more. I can. These are, I think these are still selling secondhand for about seven to 800 pounds uh, on the secondhand market. So I was thinking, okay, I can still get out of it. Um, I don't mind taking a punt. Fair enough. So I bought it, and it it wasn't a wow factor for me. Uh, it's an okay watch, but again, the price point for me it just grates on me that this is so expensive. And the, as I said earlier, the fit and finish of this is not good. Now, it has a sapphire crystal with an acrylic bezel. So this bezel is acrylic, which is going to scratch up. Now, I don't think it's going to look very good when it's all scratched up. Uh, I was talking earlier, I uh, made a video last week um, when I was talking, sorry, it went up last week, uh, I made the video yesterday, and I, I bought this one. This Seiko cost me £400, well, no, these are retailing for £400, and I bought this for £340, so I got 15% discount of it. And this Seiko is a much, much better watch than this one, absolutely blows this one out of the water. It's just, yeah, it's similar. You've got, uh, this is a Hardlex crystal on the Seiko, uh, and it's got the similar sort of bezel uh, with acrylic, a Jubilee bracelet. So it's, it is a bit comp compatible in-house Seiko movement, which a proper in-house uh, Seiko movement made by Seiko themselves. So in terms of value for me, this it really puts this one to shame. If you want to watch the video of that, I'll put a link below on, there's a little uh, tab there you can follow to watch the video for that. Uh, so, that it, I hardly, I've hardly worn this watch. As you can see, there's hardly, there's no wear on it whatsoever. There's no scratches. I think literally I've worn it for maybe five days. Uh, the deployment buckle, folding deployment buckle is quite nice. I do like that and it does have a nice quick release uh, pin system to remove your strap if you want to remove it and change it to straps, which I did. That's why there's not so much wear in it. I'm not a big fan of uh, this. I did resize it and wear it for about a day on this just so I could give it a proper go. Uh, I'm just not into bracelets. And yeah, that's, that's a quite nice thing. But the rest of the watch, it really, for me, it just grates on me. I just don't like wearing it because I look at it and think it's just overpriced for what it is. Now, this is a watch that I bought um, probably about four, maybe five years ago, and it cost me, I think it was about 220 pounds. Uh, this this is a micro brand. If you don't know what Spinnaker is, it's a micro brand, which is made in China. Now, I don't know if the case of this, now this, they, it's a, they say it's a Swiss, made watch so 
I don't know if all the parts are actually fully made in Switzerland um, because now they've changed the rules where a certain amount of parts have to be fully made in Switzerland. So the bracelet could be made in China, the case could be made in China, they could have just shipped everything over and then it's all screwed together in, um, in Switzerland and it's Swiss made. So I, I don't know what percentage of the watch is actually Swiss made. For me, it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, this has the uh, Japanese um, NH35 movement, a good, reliable workhorse movement. And I think this is a much, much better watch for, for what it is. Now, one of the things which, which caught me, this looks like it's got anti-reflective coating. You can just see it's got a slight blue tint to it. So it's probably anti-reflective coating inside, but you can see my camera through the reflection. This one, at the same angle, you can see it, but you can see the dial a lot better. There's no, not a major reflection on this. So 220 odd pounds to something that's five times the price and not as good. It, I think anyone who's looking at buying one of these watches, you really need to think twice and look at some other brands. There are so many other brands at this price at 1100 pounds. Uh, Hamilton, you've got Oris, uh, there's so many other, other smaller brands out there if you don't want to go for um, uh, a big brand name. Zodiac really isn't a big brand name, I wouldn't really call it a big brand name, so something like Oris really blows it out of the water I think in terms of history. So I would recommend looking at other watches before you pick this one. I mean unless you're absolutely in love with this watch then fair enough, but for me it just doesn't make sense um it's got c3 loom the spinnaker has got three c3 loom as well um it it is just a micro brand really all the specs of this is a micro brand specs watch uh, the stp movement is not something which is exclusive you can quite easily buy that um movement on the on the open market you could make a watch in china a case um bracelet everything else and then just say put uh, an stp movement the the three dash 13 movement in there which is the same movement as this one and you could sell it for half the price of this one and probably still make a killing so this is really really overpriced unless you're going to get an absolutely Great deal. Like I think I got a really good deal. Um, this is gonna. I'm. I'm not keeping this. I'm gonna. I'm normally I pass the watches on to my family members and stuff. This one I'm definitely gonna be selling. Actually, it's probably by the time this video goes up, it's probably already gone because I don't want to. Uh, I, I think I'd just like to get rid of it as soon as possible. It's just been sat in its box. Um, what else can I say? I. It, I just don't like it. And another fa point for me is that. They've come out with all these wild and wacky, crazy colors, which a lot of people tend to like. A lot of the reviews on this watch are those watches. I wanted just the basic black dial. I, I don't like these wild and wacky colors. Like the, I think they call it the grapefruit and the watermelon and other other silly names that they come up with. They have like red inserts or orange or green inserts. For me, that shows to me that the brand is struggling, so they need to make these gimmicky dials and cases and uh, colors to push the watch forward because otherwise nobody's going to buy it otherwise. And to me, I, it, it kind of puts me off the brand as well. I think if they'd stuck to just having just an, a normal uh, range, um, I'm trying not to be too negative, but it is quite difficult because it just annoys me when, when brands do that. They don't need to do that unless the, the watches are not really worth it. And it kind of makes me think they're hiding something. So I, I really don't have anything else to say about this watch. Uh, it's you pay your money, you take your choice. I paid my money and my choice is to sell it and not keep it. And if anybody wants to buy the watch, I think definitely look at other watches please do look at the watches because you may come out and regret it. If you pay a higher price for what you can resell it for, you may end up losing money and you will regret it.